This is a trumpet. And given how much you guys like my 15 second trumpet lesson, I thought I'd take the time to give you a more thorough understanding of how to play it. Because let's be honest, you deserve more than what I had to offer you the first time. And that's why in this video, we're going to explain the process of playing the trumpet. But I'd also like to teach you how the trumpet works and uncover some hidden secrets about how to get better at the trumpet at a faster pace so that you can learn your favorite songs in a matter of days, even if you've never touched a trumpet a day in your life. So without further ado, let's charge into the video. First things first, case on the floor not your lap, the floor. Good, now let's open it up. At this point, you probably already have a trumpet in a mouthpiece, and this is where I get to teach you the incredibly intricate and complex process of assembling this monstrosity of an instrument. Mind blowing, I know. Now, if you don't have a mouthpiece yet, you'll need to buy one. I recommend the Bach 5B, link in the description below. If you have a 7C, I would recommend throwing it across the 7Cs and buying a Bach 5B. Now you might be wondering why, but I promise we'll talk more about mouthpieces later. For now, we've got a trumpet to play. Next, take your left hand, place your ring finger in the ring and follow suit. Then take your right hand, place your middle finger on the middle button and follow suit. Your right thumb will typically rest underneath the lead pipe with your left thumb below that. If you happen to have larger hands, you might consider putting your left middle finger in the ring instead of the ring finger. And although it seems like your right pinky should go inside the hook, your pinky is actually going to be much happier on top of the hook instead. The only reason you'd put your pinky inside the hook is if you need to hold the trumpet with one hand so that you can turn a page or pick up a mute with your other hand. Great, let's keep going. Now sit or stand with your best posture. Chest out, shoulders back, chin up, tall but relaxed, and say M. Now check this out. By saying M, you've made the corners of your lips firm while hopefully keeping the center soft. You've just formed something called an embouchure. This helps direct your air through the mouthpiece when you place it on your lips. First, let's try blowing without the instrument. Remember, this air is going to go through the instrument, so we need to push it forward, not spread out. Because we said M before blowing, the corners of our lips will help us do that. That way we won't have to try to blow as hard as we can because that'll make us extremely dizzy. Good job! Now let's add the trumpet. Remember your good posture, lift it up slowly and bring it towards you. Take a relaxed, full breath and blow. As you do this, it may happen on your first try or it may take a couple of tries. So did you do it? What note did you play? If your note sounded like this, you just played a G. If it sounded like this or this, the note you just played is called a C. If you can't play any notes yet, don't worry. I promise to help you out in a second, as long as you stay with me. Now I know what you're thinking. I can play three different notes without pressing any buttons down? Well, what if I told you you could play even more than three? Pretty cool, huh? Keep watching because we're just getting started and I'm about to teach you something pretty mind-blowing and I'm pretty sure you're not going to get this in your average band class. But before we get to that, if you haven't been able to make a sound at all yet, try just puckering your lips instead of saying M and give that a few tries. Remember to blow with lots of air. You can also try making a sound with just the mouthpiece. Take it out and hold it in your non-dominant hand like this. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to use my right hand, but if you're right-handed, you should use your left hand. Be sure to place your embouchure in the center of the mouthpiece and try blowing through the mouthpiece a few times. After doing this for a bit, you'll probably discover that theoretically you can play just about anything on your mouthpiece that you can play on the trumpet. Now I also heard that the newest method to making a sound is by smashing the like button on this video. In all seriousness, if you're enjoying this video and would like more trumpet tutorials like this one, let me know in the comments below. Now that we've figured out how to make a sound, it's time to explore a little. Remember these buttons I talked about earlier? These are called valves and they may be the coolest part of the instrument. Each valve is connected to its own slide, and when you press that valve down, the slide connected on the valve causes the pitch on the instrument to go down. The smallest slide, connected to the second valve in the middle, lowers the pitch by one half step. The slide connected to the first valve is roughly twice as long and lowers the pitch by two half steps, or one whole step. Press down both valves and the pitch is lowered by three half steps. Since the third valve is roughly three times as long as the second valve, this is the same as pressing down the third valve. And you can see that by pressing down one and two versus pressing down three, it creates the same note. Because we're able to play multiple notes with the same fingerings, and we're able to add valves together to lower the pitch more and more, we're able to find a combination of valves to play every note from this one below the staff to this one above the staff just by using these three valves. And that's amazing because that means just by playing around with the valves yourself, you can figure out essentially any piece of music you could possibly imagine. So go ahead, explore. 
Every single one of these notes has at least one note name, and most of them have two or more. I'll include my website in the description bar below where I have a fingering chart so that you can learn all the note names after watching this video. By the way, for those of you just starting out, congratulations, good luck, and have fun. I hope you have some good memories to share along your journey. But first, we have one more thing to talk about. Remember when I told you to throw your 7C across the 7Cs? Well, if you already bought one, don't fret. A 7C mouthpiece is better than no mouthpiece but not by much. And if you really want to know why I so strongly suggest the 5B over the 7C, then you need to watch this video right here, because I share hidden secrets about how mouthpieces work and why playing a 7C could mean the end of your journey as a trumpet player. And if you happen to be a band director watching, I want you to know that making this one single change could revolutionize the way your trumpet section sounds. Though I hope to see you in the next video as well. Thanks so much for watching guys and take care.